We spent the past couple of years in a crazy hot market. Louisville home sales decline as demand outpaces supply. Effective communication is at the core of any situation. If you master these two ideas, you'll have a chance of being successful at residential real estate marketing. I think you need to be looking for investment opportunities that move the needle. The market will never crash if demand exceeds supply. This is what I've been telling you all along. This is the J-Pitt Show. And we're back, folks. Welcome back to the J-Pitt Show. Let's jump into these Q&As. Yeah. Uh, I'll just kind of pick pick a few that I think are the best. And mm-hmm. uh, So here's one. Do you think Zillow, so Zillow's stock price tanked. All real estate stocks mm-hmm. tanked after this news. Do you think Zillow will get away from Zillow Flex and go back to a pay-to-play system? I don't. I think it's the exact opposite. I think the pay-to-play system ends because – a real estate agent that writes checks to Zillow has no reliable way. They have no reliable way to estimate what compensation they would get or, or what sort of revenue. Let's just talk from business business perspective. Um, most of the people that, that buy Zillow leads have teams. Um, they, they write, Ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar a month checks with the expectation that they're going to get receive a multiple of that in revenue. Yeah. So if you can't make twenty grand a month on a ten thousand dollar spend, are you going to write a ten thousand dollar check? So it used to be it was a very simple math equation. Okay, I buy leads in this zip code. The average price in this zip code is this. Okay, if I sell a house at that average price and I make an average commission rate of this, I will generate this much revenue. No, you can't. No, you now can't. You, that do that math. All, that, yeah. that math don't math no more, right? You don't know if it's three, two and a half, two, it's one and a half, five hundred. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's solve x, solve for x, solve for x, and you no, it's impossible. <laughs> it's not even x. It's solve for you know ampersand. Like I don't it's like you know nobody knows what that means anymore. Yeah. Like, is it a half a percent? Is a hundred dollars a showing? Is it five hundred dollars for a closing? Is it I'll write an offer but not negotiate? Is it? What is it? I don't know. So I don't. I think Zillow has to stay for the short run with Flex, where they they get a percentage of revenue, and their interests are aligned with the agents, and they have to trust the agents to go out and make the most revenue they can with the leads. Now, I do think Zillow will pivot, and I've got an idea on what I think they will pivot to. Um, but as it, do you want to talk about that? I can, but just bookend this. I'll say. I think market-based pricing has to go away and they have to go all in on flex for now. You think it'll happen fast? I think it has to happen fast because they're getting crushed. I mean, they are getting absolutely waylaid. Like, uh, where is Zillow stock? Um, They're up 4.3% from a bottom. Well, everything's up right now because they decided not to move rates. Yeah, so 5 point, they were... So, so Zillow's peak, uh, March 15th, before the announcement, was 50, they were at $53. Um, it's back to 50, but it bottomed, it bottomed at 43. So they went from 53 to 43 within a matter of three days. So they, it, Monday, it, it bottomed. Um, seen crazier drops. I've seen crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're a Bitcoin fan, you, you've seen crazier drops, right? Crazier yeah. drops and crazier peaks. But... Um, I, I, what I think here's ultimately what I think Zillow is going to do. Zillow is going to go pay to play on the listing side. You're going to have to pay to have your have your for sale listing on Zillow, whether that's a consumer or an agent or what. I think there's going to be a pay to list. I was wondering if they were going to do that, or uh, I I was thinking make the consumer pay. There could be a monthly. A way. There could be a monthly subscription um, to search. There, um, I think ultimately Zillow could go could go full Redfin, like like I'm a brokerage and I have salaried agents and you know the flex is no longer a thing because they have their own agents. I think yeah. the I think this backs them into a corner. It's it's a corner they never wanted to be in, like or if they were going to be in it, they were going to pivot there. Like it was going to be death by a thousand cuts, right? They were going to go like an inch at a time for the next ten years, and then all of a sudden they were going to have realtors sitting in an office in Louisville somewhere. Yeah. You know, but but it it could happen next year, like that. That I don't know. I don't know, but I think pay to list. They have to monetize their traffic, and they still have the traffic. They still have the best search site, and the public is not ready to give up a site that has every listing on it. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. That's my concern. Like one of my first reactions to this was like, all right, well, I'll just leave the MLS and I'll build a website and I'll have more listings than anybody in town and people have to come to me. Um, but I don't know that I can pull that off. Maybe I can, but um, I cooled down. <laughs> I cooled down, and here we are. Has your mind just been racing? Just yeah, all the ideas. Not with worry, but with ideas. And, For sure. Because I'm not. I mean, at all. when stuff like this happens, this is where people make a killing, an absorbent amount of money. Absolutely. Somebody's going to solve an issue. Somebody's going to solve multiple issues. Yeah. And there's going to be multiple companies that probably come out of this. I mean, we had agents that said, uh, that came to me last Friday and said, okay, we got it. We're going to make a website um, and we're going to charge uh, 20 bucks a month to every real estate agent in Louisville. And we're going to distribute their buy side agent commissions on all their listings to all real estate agents. Like just the simplest site ever. Like you just come, you, we, we, we just, that's all the data we house is the buy side commission. So you know what's offered and what's not. Yeah. It's just going to save you. And you know, it's a, it's a 20 or a $10 a month service that you like, you're like, yeah, I don't want to make a phone call on every showing I do. That's a great idea. I mean, it's just, and, and that's the crazy thing is I, you know, how do you get, how do you get the data? I don't know. But Maybe Zillow will charge. I mean, I think Zillow you will. Think Zillow will take a percentage not make agents pay till after it closes like they do on the boss side now? I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you think they'll take a percentage on the list side? Perhaps. I mean, that's that's on the table. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I would love to be in just a... In those rooms yeah, right now, having those conversations. The, ideas. the problem is, it's people like us should be in those rooms because they have people that don't know real estate making these decisions. Yeah. <laughs> and they shouldn't have like the multi-million we sell 50 million dollar homes agents in there they no. need the bread and butter agents they, they need yeah they need us they need they need middle america 700 transaction a year like you know machine machine yep. type company yeah that's that's what they need uh okay next question so we kind of answered there are a few questions about zillow in here okay uh, agents are obsessed with zillow yeah <laughs> well a lot of our agents get their lease but, from zillow. Uh, uh here's one and this is I think, well, I was a little confused about the buyer agency agreements, but someone asked, will we be starting to implement buyer agency agreements within the br brokerage? Oh, I think, well, we have to. We have to do compensation agreements. So they ask buyer agency agreements. Well, I think a lot of agents are confused about that. Of Like yeah. they hear buyer compensation agreement. Well, everybody agreement. assumes it's an exclusive buyer agency agreement, but it's not that is required. But I, I say, why not? Yeah. If you're going to pitch yourself, well, pitch yourself, right? Go get the exclusive buyer agency agreement signed. I prefer you do it not at the front door, but yeah. um, if you got to do it at the front door, you do it at the front door. Yep. I, well, I mean, I can I, see like a great way of doing it is okay, here is my buyer commission compensation agreement. Okay, sign it, go in the house, you build great rapport, you're a great agent. Yeah. And then after saying, look, you don't have to work with me right now, but here's this buyer agency agreement. And here's my fee. Somebody might charge more. Somebody might charge less. But I can tell you I'm the best agent that's going to represent you. Mm -hmm. And you know what my fee is right now. Yeah. Uh, let's sign this and let's, let's, let's do this thing. Well, and so the thing that I think is, I don't know, the thing that I think is, is kind of interesting to see, I don't know that it is allowed because there is verbiage in the settlement that states how the commission – must must be conveyed. So like for example, let's say you it can't say 2 to 5%, right? It can't say whatever the seller offers, right? Um and I think so if you say it's 3%, well, you might be willing to waive a half a percent if the seller offers 2 and a half and that would prevent your client from having to bring money or pay money out of pocket, but you can't negotiate that way. So there is going to be a, a form that gets sent out by GLAR. It will happen. Um, you know, there's going to be guidance. The, the general counsels of all these organizations are working on these probably right now. And it's probably going to go before the forms committee and then whatever. So that doesn't mean that we can't take it and amend it. Right. And, and create our own. 
you know, so yeah, to answer your question within the brokerage, I think, I think we absolutely are going to move towards exclusive buyer agency agreements because you need to, I don't think it is wise to have a client out there signing multiple agency forms, compensation agreements with everybody. Fr frankly, it takes a sting out of it, Ryan, your example earlier that says, well, you know, I don't want to sign that right now. Like, okay, well, you need to understand that you can't look at a home unless you sign this form. Like the next guy or next girl that shows up to show you a house is going to ask you for the very same thing. So the fact that everyone has to do it now mm -hmm. takes a lot of the sting out of the presentation. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of agents have to learn downswings. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Definitely no upsides. Will you sign this, please? No, yeah, like, none of that. You need to sign this. Yeah. If you want the best representation, you need to sign this. Right yeah. now, uh, there's four copies. Okay, last one. Uh, we've kind of answered, but we'll go over it again. Do you yeah. think we'll see more agents negotiating commissions on the buyer side or buyers, including, in quote, sellers to pay 3% of buyer's agent commission on offers? Um, I think that will happen, but I think it'll be topside limited by the, by the financing in yeah. those cases. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think it would be wise... Um, it would be wise to really take stock in who you're working with. Here's the thing. And what's going to happen, Ryan, is the smart clients will pay competitive fees to get the best representation. Okay. And, and get their offer accepted. So, so let me ask you this. Let me just, you're, you're a listing agent, pretty, pretty heavy listing agent. Okay. Um, and forget that you know me for a second, and let's just hypothetically, huh? I said easy. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's say I show up and show your listing, and let's say let's say you, you're doing what I think is the smart thing and offering a good, healthy cooperating agent fee. But it's, let's just say it's two and a half because that's where you think the market is. Okay, so you're offering two and a half, and I show up, and I I write you an offer. And, um, you know, it's a good offer. It's, it's new construction. So I'm offering you list price and I'm not asking for any closing costs. Uh, but you got an offer with, from my client and another client. And I tell you in the course of our discussion that you appreciate the two and a half percent offer. Um, I've negotiated a three and a half percent fee with my client and they're going to pay me the 1% over and above, uh, you know, on the closing statement, just, I don't know if that has to be disclosed but let's just say I disclose it and you get another offer, right? And another offer is the same price. Okay. And they're taking the two and a half percent fee, but, uh, there is no additional compensation, right? So you don't even know if, which this remains to be seen as well. All right, let's change this a little bit. Let's say it comes out cause this is quite possible that the seller is not allowed to overcompensate the buyer. So the buyer's agent has a has a five hundred dollar flat fee, and let's say it comes out because we're speculating at this point. We don't know what's possible. We don't know that the buyer's agent can take your two and a half percent when they've only negotiated five hundred dollars with their client. What's going to happen there? Okay, that's a that's an interesting question to consider. Does your seller get to keep the balance? I don't know. But let's say they say, no, Ryan, I'm sorry. I can't take your 2.5%. I've only got $500 negotiated. Assuming that plays out like that, what offer are you accepting? All things are the same in the offer. I'm getting paid by my client an extra full percentage point. Okay? And they're getting paid $500 and can't take your. So your client is netting. To um, two percent more, let's say. Yeah, I think it's uh, you could look at it two ways. I, I, knowing, I know you're going to look at it two ways. Knowing the client could pay an extra percent to you, stronger buyers. That's how I would look at it. But, and you explain that to your seller, and mm -hmm. then you go to the other side. But you have this person over here. You're you know you're getting two percent more. And then you look at their financing with the two. I mean, there's a lot of variables. It's a lot of variables. Pursue, two percent's a lot, though. I mean, okay, maybe. Okay, let's say mine is 20% down conventional and theirs is, you know, 3% down conventional. Well, I think you go back. Who's going to put the most earnest money down? And Let's say let's say I'm putting down 5000 in earnest money and they're doing 
fifteen hundred bucks. But you're netting two percent more. I think you go with the the agent that's getting three three and a half percent. I think so you're, too. You're, your offer. You know that's where I'm going. Yeah. Right? Because I positioned myself as the one that's doing that. But here's what I think is going to happen. I think the perception of quality from a seller when it comes from when an offer comes from an agent who has negotiated a higher fee for themselves, if that's even transparent to a seller, I don't know if it is. But if you talk to me, now let's remember that you know me now, and let's presume that this other agent is not very good. You, you, you're not impressed when you talk to this other agent. And you know me, and you know I don't work with people that are not serious, right? Is it? It becomes easier to take a little less money for the sure thing at that point, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I well, here's what I think. I think that the best agents that command the best compensation will tend to have more success because that's the way it's going to play out to sellers. You know, it's not always about dollars, especially. I mean, okay, so two percent at two percent at you know three hundred grand is that's six thousand bucks, right? But that 6000 extra, when the deal doesn't close or when they backwards negotiate after inspections or delay closing for an extra couple of months and the builder has to carry, has more carrying costs. You know what I mean? I, 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 I really think that the real agents are going to win. Absolutely. They're going to win. And, and it's just, it, it's so easy to see. And that's why I'm not worried at all. You know, okay, so so let's pivot now because we're done with questions, right? Pretty much. Yes. Okay, so let's pivot to how agents win because I think this is this is a good segue. So here's how agents win. Here's how agents win. Um, agents win by when you list a home, offering a healthy cooperating agent fee, and go public with it. Be loud with it. You have had your marketing arm tied behind your back for three years. All of us have. Not you specifically, Ryan, but you as an agent. You guys, you <laughs> listening to this. Your marketing arm has been tied behind your back. You In real estate, you got two arms. One's a negotiation arm and one's a marketing arm. That's how you make your money, right? Um, and I suppose this is an accidental boxing reference, but like if you got one arm tied behind your, your, your back and in a boxing ring, you're going to get knocked out. Yeah. Okay? But – everyone, hopefully the ones, especially the ones that win, their negotiating arm is a lot stronger. It's, it's just more impactful. So, but now you get to be a marketer too. Again, this is, this is exciting, Ryan. Most people are boohooing about this, but it's exciting. I am alive. I am woken up, right? Like it's been too easy. And I hate to say that because it's sound cocky. Um, but it's been too easy to do what we've done the last couple of years. For me, I, we're number one in the state, and it's been too easy for me. And I hate saying that because it's like, um, it's it's a fig jam comment that my <laughs> buddies around here in the office give me a hard time about. But it's been too easy. Now you get to be a marketer and a negotiator. Yep. And not only that, you are required to be both or you're going to lose. So you know what? Now we're really going to beat the competition because I'm going to do both. I'm going to market the fact, doing it right this second, that we're offering competitive cooperating agent fees, which means you, when you because you're a good agent and you've got a buyer, you're going to want to show my listing more, okay? And you're going to want to sell it more because you know I'm paying you better, okay? And it's going to drive a higher price for my seller, just like I said on Facebook the other day. I offered a 3% buy-side fee and I sold it over list in one day. Not even one day, like five hours. Okay, and then the sellers are going to want to come find me and list their house with me because I offer better fees and I get better results. Yep. And the smart agents are going to be the ones that follow suit. Yeah, it is exciting. And it's not a dogmatic thing. I have no romance attached to 3%. I have none. And we've said that on episodes before. I, 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 in fact, it's the opposite. I hate it. That it's because we do it because we've always well, done it because it allowed agents that didn't that weren't worth it to charge it and now put it in jeopardy for me. And all these headlines saying the six percent is dead. Realtor commission is dead. Guess what? It's been dead. <laughs> like if you look at the statistics, commissions are closer to five percent than they are six percent. Yep. 
and uh, it's just the headlines. Yeah, uh, I've been having to explain that to people. I've had, I've had a couple friends ask me about it. You know, yeah. I've talked to them. Not worried. Here's here's what's going on. We still don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, there's too many unknowns. Um, but like always, right? Get get yourself a good agent. Get yourself a good one. If you don't know a good one, they're not hard to find. Okay, they're the ones that show you their success. If you have a hard time finding your agent on Google, they're not very good. If you go to Zillow and they don't have any reviews, they're not that good. Yep. Right? If 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 you know they don't have a decent social media presence, they're not that good. An agent's number one job is to market themselves. Number one. Then it's negotiate for their clients because they don't have clients to negotiate for if they don't market themselves. And, yeah. you know, probably a distant third is to market the properties. They don't market the properties as well anymore because tech has taken that job from them. Now there's a reason to. Yeah. You know, I would say probably if you're looking at using an agent, first thing you should look at is their social media. Absolutely. <laughs> if they're not marketing themselves as an agent, as a good agent, here's my listings, here's my buyers. Here's how many uh, deals we've closed. Problem. Here's, here's the success, you know, it, it, service is one thing, but you can see service, right? People that care about their image online care about service, mm -hmm. right? Uh, all right. Do we want to get into the conspiracy or Biden administration about all this? I believe that there are probably some slightly larger forces at play in all this. Okay. The way it played out between where the settlement, where the lawsuits were filed Okay, rural Missouri and rural Illinois. Uh, there is this, a substantial sentiment that, you know, those are those are forgotten forgotten people territory, right? Um, that have, you know, financial issues, right? And I think largely it was sold big realtor organization, big real estate company, big banks, etc. Okay, and they garnered a lot of sentiment for the notion that realtors are overpaid because of that, okay? Um, so that's that's step one, okay? Um, the settlement between Remax, Keller Williams, Anywhere Real Estate, the, the first round of settlements, I think made positive change in the industry. It said, I'm gonna paraphrase, if you're a realtor, you don't have to list a property on the MLS. If you're a realtor, you don't have to be a member of an MLS. Um, if you're a realtor and you list a property on the MLS, a cooperation or a cooperating commission does not have to be offered. Okay. These were anti-competitive practices that ultimately could hurt consumers. Okay. Could. I don't say did. Could. Yep. Probably did. But I, I mean, I don't know uh, specific examples. Um. And those settlements did compress commissions, okay? You can't tell me that not listing a commission on the MLS, okay, does anything to decouple commissions from seller-paid buyer's agents. It doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. What decouples commissions is the buyer agency agreement. They could have just done that. All they did by removing the cooperation, why can't sellers advertise the commission they offer? You didn't tell them they can't offer a commission. They could have went that far. They didn't. They knew it wouldn't fly. Sellers wouldn't stand for it. They just say you can't advertise it. Why do they do that? Because they know it will needlessly drive down commission rates. Needlessly. It creates work and effort on realtors, that shouldn't have to do it. We have an easy, easy tech. So the problem is solved. We're going to go analog for no reason whatsoever. Okay. So, okay. I'll buy that. Um, you can do the agreements and, and solve the problem. This didn't solve the problem. It was done purely to drive down commissions. Simultaneously, you have the Biden administration talking about junk fees. Okay. And... In fact, the press secretary comes out yesterday saying... So I said, I could play the video. It's a minute long if you want. I don't want to play the okay. video. So, because I, I think the video, my issue 
is that she spoke on something she didn't know about. Yeah. She was uneducated. She didn't call commissions junk fees, but she said junk fees. Yep. She didn't call the, agents The, the guy fees. asking the question actually said, I didn't call them junk fees. Yeah. <laughs> and and she kind of walked it back, but then pivoted and said... They've treated realtor... Realtors, realtors have treated Americans as suckers. Unfortunately, yes. And I think they have to end up walking that back. They can't possibly mean that. But... What you do have is a historically unpopular president. And, and to be fair, the last two have been historically unpopular. Um, and they're running against each other now. Why, why we can't have better choices, I don't know. Like Political um, atheist. Over yeah, here. yeah, it's awful. So, so but, um, you know, it seems in line with the narrative. So, okay, why two weeks ago did the DOJ come out in favor of decoupling commissions and almost as a precursor to the settlement announcement. Yeah. It just makes it seem like there's a lot of pressure from the DOJ and the administration through the DOJ on this national trade organization that represents real estate agents for a certain outcome. And that certain outcome was, was depressing commissions, not decoupling commissions. Yeah. If you want to decompress commit, if you, if you want to compress commissions, if you want to make sure that consumers pay less, that, the compensation agreement was enough, right? But we just had to like stick the knife in and twist it. And also, commissions were already getting compressed. <laughs> already. And, and, and the thing that I think, I don't know if you're aware that I'm going to go here. The thing that is, I think I find most interesting about this is over the last several years, we have had record home single family residential home purchases by large entities, hedge funds, and, you know, I buying organizations, markets like Atlanta, where upwards of 10% of all transactions were institutional buyers. You know, we're driving up rents this because, because we're, we're controlling the rental supply through institutional owners. Yeah. And and so 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 let's let's for a moment examine that the the houses that these institutional buyers are buying are the same ones that entry level homeowners are trying to buy. And now we make we make it harder for them to get representation, good solid representation. Like it just seems counterproductive. So anyway, conspiracy theory behind all this is that government is bought and paid for by large corporations. Large corporations want to find it easier to buy up single family residents and control the housing supply. So what do they do? They remove the consumer's ability to have representation. Yep. Uh, so let's, let's move on. That's good. We've talked about the Biden administration, some of the conspiracy theories. I'm going to read a tweet. Uh, did I get, did I get too fringe there? I don't, I'm not I'm no, fringe no, no, middle. No. No, is that what I am? It's you just explained it real well, and good, I, I want to go good, on good. here. So, right. um, like I said, this is a conspiracy theory. Nobody knows if it's real, yeah. but I've been seeing more and more people. You know, people love a good conspiracy nowadays, of course. And I've been seeing more and more people on Twitter push this out and respond to people that are happy about uh, this settlement. And realtors are going away. And so here's just a tweet I found that went really viral. So I'm just going to read it and we'll get your thoughts. So it says, everyone arguing about realtors' commissions or if their job is worthless or not are missing the big play that will change the real estate market forever. Agent commissions is not the real play. Big tech and finance wants to disrupt the brokerage industry. They have been trying for years, but it won't work while buyers and sellers don't rely on them to get a transaction done. The play is to create chaos in the brokerage industry and re remove the liquidity in the real estate market while removing the incentive for a professional to push to sell a property. The next lawsuit will be to get rid of the exclusive listing agreement on MLSs with the excuse to help sellers to sell faster while listing the same home with 10 different brokers, but the effect is the opposite. Look at the European and Latin American markets. It takes much longer to sell a property there, and price discovery is not transparent as it is here, since you have multiple brokers listing the same property at different price points. If you ever looked for a property for sale overseas, you know what I'm talking about. 
When liquidity yeah. is gone and there is chaos in the brokerage industry, the institutional buyers will step in offering a solution through iBuyer services who are in need of a miracle to survive in this environment. Almost done, promise. From that point on, if you want to sell fast, you have to sell to them. Now they control the supply and the transactions through the big portals like Zillow. They will set the prices using their algorithm. Zillow estimates anyone. From that point on, tech companies and institutional investors control the real estate market. I, I, I can buy some of that. Yeah. I can buy some of that. It's absolutely true. You know that that is an option currently. It's just not the way. Yeah. Yeah. So so you can you can do an exclusive what's called an exclusive agency listing versus an exclusive right to sell listing. It is there is a legal mechanism for it. Um, but nobody does it. I mean it's the same reason why it wasn't good enough to say you don't have to offer cooperating commissions on the MLS when you list a house. That was the result of the first settlement. Um, but yeah, I can see it. I can totally see it. I mean, if the, if there's somebody twisting their mustache somewhere, it's, it's the company, it's, it's the hedge funds, the major hedge funds that are trying to own all of American housing. Yep. So it's wild, man. Just, uh, I read that. I was like, huh, it's interesting. It's just interesting what people will think of or come up with. And nowadays it's, Easy to believe a lot of things that don't seem possible. Well, and that, you know, I think a lot of that came as a result of COVID, but I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's certainly newly right. developed. Here's another one. BlackRock is 100% behind this lawsuit. Of course they are. Hedge funds got involved a decade ago. Over 275,000 homes bought in two years, which now they control rent payments across the country. They will now be able to buy more cheaper. Not many are looking at what is going on with the big picture. <laughs> I mean, who knows if all those facts are accurate, but I mean, it is what it is. Like institutional buying is a thing. Okay. So when you talk about institutional buying, controlling supply, they're controlling the housing, the available supply of housing for sale and the available supply of housing for rent, which when you control supply, you control price, right? So, um, drive up the price of uh, the price of purchasing, you can justify higher prices and rent. I mean, it's just, you make it coming and going. Yeah. Uh, all right. I don't have anything else on this. Do you? No, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I said my piece agents need to go find listings. They need to know their worth. They need to offer cooperating agent commissions. It's the best thing you can possibly do. Agents will fall out of yeah. business. It's a fact it's going to happen. Uh, that's the silver lining for successful real estate agents is that you, they may be extracting dollars from the total addressable market, but then your competition is going to go away. So your share needs to grow yeah. um, for you to continue to earn what you earn or increase what you earn. Now, I think, you know, it's going to cause a lot of different changes in the way business is done, but the best are still the best. That's pretty much the long and short of it. And, um, you know, I'm not a stick together and we can get what we always had. I'm a, I'm a grow, evolve, and adapt kind of guy, yeah. right? And I will win. Um, and I'm not Me against, too. I'm not against tech. I'm not against tech. Like, let's, let's make ourselves better with it, but not, not, you know, scream at the sky. Like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's end this with something non real estate related. I'm sure you heard about it's it. Heavy. Uh, heavy. Have today. you seen the Boeing? Uh -uh. thing going on right now so all these maybe. boeing planes are there's problems they're I having to land or just and there was a they were in a lawsuit with somebody who used to work at boeing and he gave his deposition uh, i think this was uh last week it might have been early this week i don't know days run together for me now but uh he gave his deposition and statement and the Boeing lawyers asked him to stay one more day when he was going to fly back. So he changed his flight and he was talking about all the hoops Boeing jumps through and the problems really wrong with their planes. Next day they find him dead in his car Oh wow! and said it was suicide. And he had told his family before, if like you, if I'm dead, like it's not suicide. So we're so, just going full on conspiracy. Yeah. So they asked him, <laughs> well, their stock tank, like huge. Wow. It was taken already because of all the problems with their planes. And when this came out, it really started tanking. Wow. So I did not hear anything about that. I mean, that's man. real that's, life, like TV show. Like, yeah, that's like Netflix, yeah. like, uh, you know, Netflix series, like 
kind of a drama stuff going on. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. They, you know, I ju- I, I've heard a lot of people joke they stopped making the Black Mirror because reality got yeah. worse <laughs> than the than the than the you know their ideas. Their writers' room couldn't have come up with stuff that people would actually, you know, be shocked by because real life was worse. Yeah. I don't know, man. I it's interesting times. I will tell you, you know, uh, the best are going to win, and and you know, it's funny. I, I hate that. It sounds so similar to woke, but like, be awake, wake up. You know, if it's if you've been going through the motions, wake up. You know, our industry's great. Yeah, we're gonna be fine. There's plenty of money in it. You know, there there, twenty estimates uh, north of twenty five percent of the nation's GDP is surrounding our indus- industry. Um, go get your share. Like yeah. that's it. Like like, there's a reason why if you're a real estate agent, there's a reason why you don't punch a clock and work nine to five. It's because you're built different, right? Yep. You want to be now. Now those people that limped into the industry um, and and don't do the right things and are below subsistence level earnings and you know hoping for something to change. I, this isn't it. This is the other direction for you, right? But um, you know, I won in the great in the great recession, right? I, I stayed relevant through the pivot. Um, I, I I won as a result of COVID, and this is going to be no different. Yep, absolutely. So one thing I think we should track over the next two months or maybe a month or so, be interested to see if you have less new agents reaching out to join the team. Yeah, it is. It's still a rel- relatively small sample size. I've got a couple of new ones joining. Um, you know, I've had a few. You know, you know, it'd be interesting to see if we get more transfer type agents like from other companies coming because – of what they perceive from us mm-hmm. uh, as a, as a benefit, or if we were to lose agents, you know, it could go the other way. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I, I've never been knock on wood, you know, never been a broker that has lost a lot of agents to other companies. Sure. You know, if an agent leaves my team, they typically stay with the brokerage, you know, a handful over the entire time we've been here. So, all right, folks, I think that's enough. We got a little heavy on you today. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, we gave you a lot of speculation and a lot to think about. Uh, uh, unfortunately, facts are in short supply right now. We're, we're going to you know, monitor the situation and learn as we go, and we'll bring you that data. This will be a large fixture, I'm, a, I'm certain, in the podcast for the foreseeable future, certainly uh, on our socials as well. So take care, or take care and make sure you go to uh, Instagram, TikTok, anywhere you social, see Hannah's handiwork. She's doing a great job putting out videos and making sure my my message gets out there. That is at J Pitts Realtor for me, at RyanHarris.re for Ryan. He puts out great content as well. But again, that's all we got for you today. Tune in next week. Uh, we'll, we'll get you some more information. Appreciate it. Peace.